Hello and yonjo everyone. In today's video, I'll be showing you guys how to make beef tendon soup. All of you guys have requested me to, to show you guys how we like to make it in our house. So I wanted to show you guys how to do it today since it is the perfect weather to have beef tendon soup because it is currently raining here in the Pacific Northwest. So I'm going to show you a pretty basic recipe. This is kind of like a base recipe and then after you guys give it a try, you guys can definitely add other vegetables in there and other proteins that you prefer but a lot of you have requested me to show you how to make it so I'm going to just show you a pretty simple recipe and I hope you guys can give it a try and I hope this is the flavor palette that you were looking for. Um, if you ever had this soup before let me know if you like it. Let me know if you like beef tendon uh, because it does have a pretty unique gelatinous texture to it um, as well as what other ingredients and vegetables you guys like to add into the soup. Other than that, let's go ahead and I'll show you guys how to make the beef tendon soup today. Um, beef tendon, and one we like to call it an new ling. So uh, let's go ahead and I'll show you guys how we simply like to make it at home. Let's go. All right, so the first thing I want to do is cook down the tendon. And here's the tendon that I'm using. You can typically find these at the Asian grocery store at the meat section. Um, but tendon is basically the tissue that aligns the uh, meat and the bones together. And it is very chewy if you don't cook it down. And it can also be very fibrous as well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna cook this down so that it becomes super soft and also very, kinda like gelatinous so that you can actually be able to eat it. If you don't cook this down, it's going to be very chewy when you eat it. I'll be using about a pound and a half of tendon today. You guys can go a little bit more or less depending if you really like tendon or not. But I really like tendon because of the soft and gelatinous texture that it has. Um, so all I'm going to do now is I rinse these off really nice. I'm going to put this through the Instapot for about 45 minutes under the stew and meat section button. If you guys want, you guys can definitely put this under like pressure cook. If you guys have a pressure cooker, just cook this under pressure cook for about, I don't know, 30 minutes or just until it's nice and soft, um, depending on the pressure cooker that you have. You can also just cook this and boil it for a good one or two hours, probably more than that, um, until it is nice and soft and tender. So I'm going to go put this through my Instant Pot to make it a little bit faster so that we can show you how to make this soup and then uh, I'll show you guys what kind of vegetables and seasonings I like to use for the soup. All right, I'm going to put this into about six cups of water with about half a tablespoon of salt and I'm just going to cook this down. I'm going to set this to the stew and meat section for about 45 minutes and then we'll see if it's tender enough. If not, I can always adjust the time and cook it even more. All right, so while the tendon is cooking, I'm gonna show you guys all the other ingredients that I like to use into the soup since uh, I know you guys would be curious. Uh, other meat that I'm gonna be adding is some, um, in Mulei we like to call it kakang, which is smoked beef that we like to keep and have in our freezer. Um, so beef that's basically just been smoked over charcoal and we keep it in the freezer. And these are really, really nice to use for soup because it has that really nice smoky flavor. Um, and I cut these into bite-sized pieces so we can put it in the soup. So if you guys want to know how to make this, I do have a video on how to make this. But you guys can also use just regular beef and boil it down until it's nice and tender to your liking um, instead of using smoked beef. But I prefer using the smoked beef just because of that really nice smoky flavor. And then the other thing I'm gonna add in there is some beef skin. So beef skin, this is some beef skin that we like to keep in the freezer during like special occasions when we um, butcher a cow boil it down, cook it and slice it and keep it in the freezer so that we can use it for soups and also for ngala. So we're gonna be adding some of this in there as well. And this basically just has almost the same texture as tendon, it's nice and chewy and kind of gelatinous. So if you guys have this handy, you can also add this in there. But if you guys don't, you don't need to add it in there. It's just an option that you can if you want and if you have it handy. And then the herbs. So these are the herbs that I'm gonna be using in the soups pretty basic there's not much to it I have some galangal slices in here I have some lemongrass the actual stalk roots here and the actual leaves I have some kefir lime leaves here as well and some chili peppers and some green onions um, I know a lot of people like to add basil and like dill and all that other stuff to it but again it's really up to you you guys can choose and pick what you like to add into the stew or soup and make it 
your own. Okay, so let's talk about vegetables. So these are the type of vegetables that I like to use into the soup. Mushroom wise, I like to use the wood ear mushrooms. These I soaked up. Um, I used the dried ones and I soaked up for about an hour. So it blooms up really nice like this and then cut it up. And then I also like to use some oyster mushrooms as well. Again, you guys can use your favorite mushrooms. It really doesn't really matter in this soup. Any kind of mushrooms will work just as fine. But these are the two basic ones that I like to use. And then canned stuff wise, I like to use some canned banana blossom flowers here um, that I rinse up really well and cut into bite-sized pieces. And I'm also gonna be adding some bamboo shoots here as well that I cut up into bite-sized pieces. Um, so we're gonna be adding that in there as well. And some eggplants and some winter squash. So I'm using some Thai green eggplants here, the round ones here. And I'm also gonna be adding some, they call this like a, it's a version of a silk squash. Um, you guys can use any version of silk squash. I'm gonna peel off the skin and cut it. Any winter squash works just as well. Again, this part here is optional if you guys want to have more vegetables in your soup. So yeah, these are all the vegetables we're gonna be using the soup. I'm just gonna go ahead and prep them. Other than that, we can start cooking the soup after the tendon is nice and cooked. All right, so seasoning wise, it's pretty basic. All I'm gonna use is some salt. I'm gonna be adding some red curry paste in here as well, just for the color. Um, this is the one I'm using here, the red curry paste that it's already made. Um, I have some short grain sticky rice here that has been soaking in warm water for a good hour. And we're gonna blend this up and this is gonna be the thickener for the soup. This is optional. If you guys don't want to have your soup be a thick version, you guys don't have to add this rice in there. But I kinda like my soup kinda thick so I'm gonna be adding the ground up short grain sticky rice in there. And this packet here is the um, umami packet. And this is basically the wonton flavoring packet that my mom loves to use in her soup. So we're gonna be adding a whole packet of this in there as well. And again, if you guys don't wanna use this, you can sub it out for mushroom seasoning. You can also use chicken bouillon. Um, it's really your preference. And if you guys are not fond of MSG as well, you don't have to add MSG in there. Um, you can also sub it out for the mushroom seasoning if you guys prefer. Other than that, these are all the basic seasonings that we're gonna be adding in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and start cooking. The tendon is nice and cooked and um, chopped up. So let's go ahead and start cooking. In a pot here, I added about a tablespoon of oil in there. I'm gonna cook up the herbs just to flavor it up. All I'm gonna do is take the lemongrass and kind of cook it down so that it can release its natural oil in there. Same with the galangal. I'm just gonna stick it in here and let it saute up for a minute or two and then um, we'll continue adding the rest of the stuff. All right, so that's good. Let's go ahead and add in the chopped smoked beef here that we chopped up earlier. And go ahead and add in the red curry paste here. I'm adding it at this point, just so that we can release its flavor in with the oil and the meat. So I'm gonna saute this for about 30 seconds to a minute, just until you notice that you start smelling the spices being cooked through. Okay, so this is good. Let's go ahead and add water now. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cover this and let it come to a boil, and then after that, we'll add in the other stuff to it. All right, this is nice and boiling. Let's go ahead and add in the beef skin in there so they can start cooking up as well. If you guys decide to put it in there. Let's go ahead and add in the bamboo shoots and the banana blossom. Same with the mushrooms, go ahead and all, add all of that in there as well. And I didn't put a lot of water in here just because mushrooms do release a lot of uh, water into the soup so if you guys end up wanting to add more water at the end of the soup feel free to if you want that more soupy flavor texture i'm 
I'm gonna add in the kaffir lime leaves in here so they can start infusing. Okay, once this starts to boil, let's go ahead and add in the rice that we pureed earlier. That way it can start thickening up and start cooking before we add in the other vegetables because I don't want to overcook the vegetables. Again, if you guys don't want this to be thick, you don't need to add this rice in there, but I kind of like my thick, so that's why I'm adding it right now. All right, once you add in the rice, let it cook for a good three to five more minutes, and then we'll add in the other vegetables. All right, so let's go ahead and add in the eggplants, the silk squash or winter squash, also some peppers in there. lemongrass leaf, a little bit of salt to season, and a wontong soup base here. And then the last thing we're going to be adding is the cooked up tendon here. So this is what it looks like now, it's fairly soft. I cooked it for a total time of one hour and 30 minutes on the stew and meat on my Instant Pot on high. So if you guys want this to be a little bit more on the soft but a little bit more firmer texture, you might have to reduce the time on it. But I kind of like this pretty soft, so I did it for about an hour and 30 minutes on the stew and meat setting on high. It's pretty gelatinous right now, so you guys can see very gelatinous. If you guys don't want to wait for like an hour and 30 minutes to let this cook in your Instant Pot, you can definitely use your um, pressure cooker for about like maybe 30 minutes or so uh, to see if it's nice and soft. But tendon does take time to actually cook up because it is tissue and it's very fibrous and very, very chewy. And if you guys decide to boil it just in the pot with water, it will take about four hours to fully tenderize it. So just uh, information for those who don't have have like a pressure cooker or anything like that. At this point, let's go ahead and add in the tendon. And then once you add in the tendon, at this point, all we're trying to do is cook down the vegetables so it's nice and soft to your liking. And then we'll be pretty much done. Just taste it and we'll add the green onions at the end. Okay, so the eggplants are nice and cooked. Same with the squash here, or the melon. And the rice has thickened it to the way I like it to. If you guys want this even more thicker, definitely add more rice in there um, if you guys want, but this is pretty nice here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the heat. Go ahead and taste it for seasonings. Go ahead and add more salt if you guys want to. The last thing we're gonna add is some green onions. So let's go ahead and add in that now, after the heat's turned off. And this is pretty much it for the soup. If you guys want, definitely add more herbs to your preference. But other than that, we kind of like it pretty simple like this. Yum. All right, let's go ahead and stir this with some rice and we are set to go. All right, let's go ahead and serve this. And of course, my favorite way to eat this is to simply pour it over rice. And mix. 